everything that Coach Ariyama did to us or for us in our four years, you know where it comes from. And it's definitely from a place of care. People say playing at Connecticut is really hard. It's not really hard to play here. You just got to play hard. Wanting the best for you. Good play, Gabby. Crystal, win this game tonight. Wanting you to succeed at this level, but then even beyond. UConn has won the national championship. I came to Connecticut against my parents' wishes because I wanted to play for Coach Ram. People want to play for him because he is special. There's a lot of state schools in the country. None of them have been able to do what he's done in women's basketball. If it was so easy, why hasn't anyone else been able to do it? Win number 1,000 in the legendary career of Gino Auriemma. He's the guy. He's the guy that showed up every day and gave him himself. And his winning, it touches and reaches so many different parts of the game of basketball. 11th title in program history as the dynasty fulfills its destiny. When we were doing it, we didn't think, what's our history going to be when they write it? We just wanted to be really good at what we did. Somewhere along the way, when they have kids and grandkids, they'll go, let me tell you about my coach in college. That was unbelievable. I guess when you've accomplished as much as we have, that idea of I'm trying to do something that is really, really meaningful, it's, it's important, it's new, I'm doing something that's not expected, wasn't expected, we're the only ones that thought we could do it, and then let's do it again, and let's see how good we can make this, and then let's make it better than anything that's ever been. And you get to the point where you wake up in the morning and you go, we've done that. And then you go through a period where, what else am I gonna do? All right, here we go. Let's see what we got. You gotta get ready to go. Ready, go. <laughs> until you stop running, until you stop chasing whatever it is that you're chasing, there is no finish line. In some ways, the finish line is every march. And in some ways, that's just, that's just a halfway point to the next thing. The more you look back, you do become reflective in that you never feel like what you've given was that strenuous or that enormous or so uplifting and so inspiring to everyone. What you were doing is you're getting up every day, you're going out, you know, you're either recruiting and getting better players or you're putting practice together or you're trying to figure out how to win games, you're trying to deal with, you know, the personalities on your team. How do I get, how do I get this kid from 18 to 22 and get them to where they want to be or where they aspire to be? And you don't think it's a big deal. The confidence level that you have to have to be a good player here has to be higher than the average person. And it can't be fake. So now you look back on 33 years ago, that wasn't that hard. It wasn't that hard. What I, what I got from them was probably way more. At one time, we were just getting normal kids, kids who were pretty good players, but not necessarily anything special. And we had to try to figure out a way to win with them, and we did. And then all of a sudden, we started getting the best high school players. So it only, it only made sense that if we could take the best high school players and really coach them and get the right kids, they would become the best college players, and they did. It's the number one Connecticut Huskies and the third ranked team in the nation, the Lady Volunteers from Tennessee. You have to be lucky and you have to, you have to put yourself in a position to be lucky. I tell people, you know, all the time when I speak to them about, you know, 
opportunities that come along. You know, it's like you just go about your life doing what you do. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, because you've done everything along the way, you know, fate or whatever you want to call it, taps you on the shoulder and says, all right, this is your time right now. Are you ready for it? And if you are, then what's meant to be happens. Marcinia, the defender. Reserve. If you're not prepared, you haven't prepared yourself, you're not ready, you haven't surrounded yourself with the right people, you can't say, well, could you come back when I'm ready? It might only happen one time. This is it. You got the perfect team. You got the perfect moment. It's almost like you can create something that is going to galvanize all of women's basketball around the country and people that never paid attention to women's basketball. Here it is. Here's your chance. What are you guys going to do with it? And we did. UConn has won the national championship. We went undefeated. We won a national championship. We did it with a great spokesperson like Rebecca and, you know, and a little point guard like Jen, you know. And then all of a sudden, you look up and you go, wow. We had our moment and we took advantage of it. And look what happened after that. Why did I choose UConn? Why did you choose your parents? <laughs> you had no other choice. I mean, it's not like I went and, you know, was an assistant at Virginia and they said, okay, here are the five places you can go coach next year. Pick one. Here's the only place they wanted me. And I was ready to go. Had it not been Connecticut, I might have still gone. Matter of fact, the year before, I tried to get the DePaul job. Loved the city, you know, right under the uh, L. You know, the trains are going, and you're there, you know, like Catholic school that I was used to. And they didn't offer me the job. And I was like, damn. But I would have taken it, and who knows what would have happened. Could have been completely different. I left the place that had everything. University of Virginia had everything. Everything. I mean, didn't lack for anything. And now you're going to a place that has nothing. Zero, less than zero. And it's improbable. And maybe that's what, you know, makes it all the more rewarding that it, it, it's, it's so improbable. I remember asking our AD if we could have a band in cheerleaders after we won, maybe, I think maybe we won the regular season in the Big East, I don't know. I said, do you think we get a band in cheerleaders? Like, that would be pretty cool, huh? He said, nah, we can't do that right now. I wish I could have what I have and be like that, but unfortunately, you can't. Uh, and there are times when I wish I didn't have what I have. I don't, I don't really necessarily enjoy all that goes with being the coach at Connecticut. You know, after a while, that gets heavy. Um, like, I wouldn't wake up in the morning going, I hope I have to do an interview today. There's going to be TV cameras there and everything, and there's going to be lots of people, and I'm going to shake hands. Why? That's not something I would normally do. It's not something I enjoy doing. I hate all of it. I hate everything that goes with it. I like going to practice. Who's up? I like being around the team when we're doing stuff. Every time we scrimmage, in your mind, every shot you take is a game winner. You understand? And you treat every shot the same way. I like my staff. I enjoy the games. That was pretty amazing, I gotta tell you. But a lot of the other stuff that goes with what 
happens when you get to this point, which you can't have one without the other, don't get me wrong. I don't like it. I don't like it even a little bit. I'd rather be doing anything than what I'm doing right now. Stop lying to him. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. Now there comes a time when you go, can I just go coach my team and go hang out with my friends like I used to 30 years ago? Can I just go to a bar and hang out with my friends like I used to? No, you can't do those things anymore. Is that fun? No, it's no fun. But I also have a lot of things that have been given to me and my kids have enjoyed and my family have enjoyed all those things that we wouldn't have, but it's not, it's not as easy as people on the outside would think. I love when I read about people. When I was 22, I knew when I was 45, this is what I would be doing. I wish I could be one of those people, but I'm not. I have no idea what's coming next. I have no idea when this is gonna be uh, it for me, when I'm gonna coach my last game. I just know one thing. It won't be I'm announcing in September that I'm retiring at the end of the season and we're gonna have a farewell tour everywhere we go and have to put up with all the crap that I hate right now. We're certainly not gonna do that. It'll be, I wake up one morning and they're waiting for me to come to work and they're gonna go, where is he? He's in, uh, He's in a villa in Italy, and he said, if you can do him a favor, send him, send him the, the newspaper every once in a while so he can feel like he's back home. I don't know. I don't know how it will end. I don't know when. I, don't, I have no idea. I have no idea. Do you have a greatest moment of your career? A moment that I remember vividly, and we were in Philadelphia and we were playing uh, in March of 1991. And if we win, if we win this game, we're gonna go to the Final Four, which is like unheard of. From the Palestra in Philadelphia, it's the Women's East Regional Final between the number three seed Connecticut Huskies and Clemson, seeded fourth. A trip to the Final Four in New Orleans awaits the winner. Six years after you take like maybe one of the worst jobs in, in all of college basketball, and you, we don't have any players in the top 100 in the country, and now we're one game away from going to the Final Four. Here's Davis. Patterson with five on the shot clock. Scoop shot rolls in. Oh, jeez. <laughs> no way that should go, but it did. In Philadelphia, where I used to go watch games at the Palestra, where I coached a game in high school, and now we're, we have a chance to go to Final Four. And we win that game, and that's probably, thinking back, the most kind of wow, emotional type moment even now that I, I think I've ever had. Because it was so unexpected. <laughs> 30 years ago, 25 years ago, you signed a kid to a scholarship. They acted like they owed you their life a lot of times. Wow, coach is giving me a scholarship to play basketball. And parents, wow, I'm getting a scholarship to play basketball you know, to go to school, to get an education. So kids felt so, you know, indebted. And uh, if you're not careful, a lot of the kids that you're dealing with today feel they're entitled to it. That because I did this, this, and this, I deserve this. If you want to play and you want to contribute and you want to feel like you're a part of this, until you really know what you're doing, at least try really hard. At least sprint like these guys do. At least die trying. You hear it all the time. You know, this kid can make shots. This kid can rebound. This kid can do this and that. They're a spectacular athlete. And um, you know what? They hate going to school. They hate going to high school, and they're going to hate going to college. But they're special. What? That makes them special? No. You know who's special? A kid that can do all that and likes going to school and likes to get good grades. Finding those has become a little bit more difficult. 
I I'm losing my patience with you freshmen, not because you don't know what we're doing, but because you don't try. You don't even try to be good. And one of the best moments that I've had recently is when I saw the WNBA All-Star team. They picked 10 players to start. Five of them were UConn players. Five out of 10, that's 50%. And then two subs. So that's seven out of the 22 players that were chosen are UConn players. So when you see all that, you go, okay, we're doing it the right way. We're not just winning games in college and saying, okay, whatever happens, happens. We're winning games. I think we're graduating kids the right way. We're doing it the right way. And when they leave, they're continuing to do it the right way. You know, being in Italy right now, and you're asking about legacies. And we're looking at all these monuments that have been built hundreds, in some cases thousands of years ago. And you go, did that person know when they were building this that 2,000 years later, people were gonna be paying to come look at it? Probably not. We want to uh, thank the, the city of uh, Florence for um, for hosting us and um, for having a reception in our honor. What they knew was that they were doing something that they loved to do and that, that they wanted to do it as well as they could do it so that it would stand the test of time. We take great pride in what we do and, and how we do it and we feel like we're the best representatives in, in the country of uh, our sport people will be working on these cathedrals that knew they would never see the completion of it, but they knew their part was really, really important. And now we go visit those places and we go, wow, I wonder what went into thinking and the foresight to put this together. Well, they just thought, let's build the best church we can. We're in a city that represents all that is great uh, about Italy. I guess somewhere down the road, somebody will decide what this is. And when they look back, they're gonna go, man, those guys are really good at what they did. How'd they do it? People say, playing at Connecticut's really hard. It's not really hard to play here. It's not. You just gotta play hard. And maybe they'll wanna look and study, how did they do this? What kind of formula did they use? What was their game plan? You are not going to get anything easy. So don't think this is going to be easy. It's not. This is just the beginning. I'm thinking you guys are really, really good, and I'm expecting you to be really, really good. And you guys are just fighting me. Why? Why are you fighting me? Maybe they'll say, this will never be done again. Until somebody wins more championships and they go, yeah, that guy's the greatest since that other guy. I don't know. I don't know. What those 11 national championships mean to me is, is how many great players I've had the opportunity to coach, how many great people have come through our program. Doesn't matter whose name I'm above, whose name I'm under, whose name I'm next to. Uh, as long as I have those names, those players in my memory, I'm good. <laughs> 32 years, 33 years. What happened? What do you want to be remembered for? Well, I'm going to be remembered for all the games that we want and all the championships that we want. Because that's easy. Because that's what you want people to know. The other stuff, the, the stuff that really happened, how much it took out of you to, you know, get this kid to get from where they were to where they are. When we were doing it, we didn't think, what's our history going to be when they write it? We just wanted to be really good at what we did. When the in the legendary career of Gino Auriemma. We gave everything we had to this. Uh, we try not to leave anything on the table, and we poured our heart and soul into this. We've gotten more back than we ever deserved, so thank you all very much. 
30 some years and I don't know how many players and how many bus rides and how many hotel rooms. I found myself in, on a recruiting trip this year and I'm doing the middle of the summer and I'm at a light and I get in the middle of nowhere and I'm going to go try to find this high school to see this kid play. And I'm thinking, what am I doing here? I should be playing golf, relaxing, enjoying time with my grandkids. What the hell am I doing in the middle of nowhere at nine o'clock at night trying to find a high school in the middle of nowhere? What's wrong with you? Why are you doing this? It makes no sense. Until you get there and you watch the kid play and say, hmm, I think, I, I think this will be good. I think if we get this kid, we're gonna be okay. And then, you know, you just, it's, it's like a drug, I guess. And you just keep going and going and going and going, and you keep getting a high off of it, and you keep enjoying it. You like the feel of it. You like everything that it does to you. And, um, and then you, you, are a, you are a drug in so many ways because of what, what you're giving to people, hopefully, and how you're making them feel and how you would like to think that if you weren't there, they wouldn't feel the same way. For the people that we've touched that have become something greater than they ever thought they could be. Somewhere along the way, when they have kids and grandkids and great grandkids, they'll go, let me tell you about my coach in college. That was unbelievable. Thank you.